Hello everyone and welcome to my nerd cave. In today's video we are going to look at how to connect an LCD to the Raspberry Pi Pico. We have looked at how to connect and use the Nokia 5110 LCD in a previous video and today we will connect one of the most common LCDs, the 16x2 character LCD with I2C adapter. We will learn how to display text or create custom characters and we will end this video by looking at the Pico's onboard temperature sensor to display the temperature. If you are new here make sure to hit the subscribe button for more tutorials and projects being made here in the Nerd Cave. This LCD has many different pins that need to be connected to be controlled by the Raspberry Pi Pico. But today to reduce the number of pins and keep the video as basic as possible, we will use the I2C adapter. This will reduce the number of pins from 16 to 4 and create a simpler communication method. To follow along with the tutorial, you will need the following parts. You will need the Raspberry Pi Pico with header pins and MicroPython set up. If you are not familiar with the Pico and MicroPython, Pause this video and watch this video first. You will also need a breadboard and a few jumper wires to make the necessary connections. Here we have the schematic diagram and it is straightforward to connect the VBUS pin 40 to the VCC of the LCD, any of the multiple grounds on the Pico to the ground of the LCD and for the SDA we will connect to pin 1 and SCL to pin 2. Before we start and code to make the LCD do stuff, we first need libraries and drivers for the LCD. Libraries and drivers are a set of code that provides us with the core commands and functionality to get our LCD to work. Head on over to the GitHub repository of the user t-622 using the following link and grab these two files here which you will need to import. How you can do this is to download everything by clicking here on a code, hitting the download zip button, or another option is to right click on a file and save link as and to save it to your computer. Now open Fonny, click on file open, open both these files and save them on a Raspberry Pi Pico. Before we look at our first example we first need to know the I2C address. Create a new file and on my GitHub repository you'll find the program I2C scan. Copy this code and paste it. Now running this file will give you the I2C address. Take note of this as you will need it a bit later. In this case mine is 63. Now go back to my GitHub repository, open example 1, copy all the code and create a new file in Fonny and paste it. This example is very basic, showing you how to write the text to the screen and create custom characters. Here is the short demo. Now let's look at the code. Here we import the uTime library. To use the sleep function for delay and from the machine we import the I2C and pin function. We then import the two libraries we saved on the Pico and then set our address of the I2C which in my case was 63. Then set the number of rows and columns. Then we can start to initialize our I2C communication setting it equal to the variable I2C. Finally we initialize our LCD using the library by setting it equal to the variable LCD. To keep the code neater I created the function greeting to display welcome to the nerd cave. We first make sure to clear the LCD by using the function LCD clear. Then move the cursor where we want our text to start. The first parameter is our X position and the second parameter is your Y position which can be 0 for the first row and 1 for the second row. In this case the cursor will be at 5 but starting writing at 6. Now we can write our string by using the put string function. Then we can move the cursor to the third column on the second row and use the put string function again. We then use the uTime.sleep function to display the text for 2 seconds before clearing our LCD screen. In this function we will create custom characters. We will use the custom char function and pass it a byte array with 8 hex values. To do this it's very simple. Go to the following website which will allow you to create LCD characters. Make sure that the data type is hex and then create your own custom character here by clicking on the blocks to draw. Copy the hex values once you create your character and paste them in the byte array. The first character created here will be at location 0. Now you can do this for multiple characters incrementing the starting location. In the last part we can call our function greeting to display our text and call the function custom character to store our character. Now we move our cursor to the beginning, 0, 0 and we write a custom character as text on our first row. To put the character at different positions, we can use the put char function, giving the character a location from the custom characters we have created. In the following example, we will look at how to display the onboard temperature sensor of the Raspberry Pi Pico. 
Open example 2 from my GitHub, copy all the code and create a new file in Fonny and paste the code. A lot of this code comes from my previous tutorial. We will do exactly the same thing, importing the libraries and initializing the I squared C and LCD. The most important part will be the function here, read temp. We create a variable sensor temp and set it equal to the analog digital converter 4 where the temperature sensor is connected. We then create a conversion factor which we will need to convert the analog data to a voltage level. We then read all the analog data and multiply it with the conversion factor. We then set the temperature here using the formula provided by the data sheet of the Raspberry Pi Pico. We format the string only to display two decimal values and add it to a custom string to display the temperature. Then we print out the temperature out to the console, wait for two seconds before taking another reading and return the string. We then create an endless loop where we read the temperature, move our LCD cursor to the first row and column character and display our temperature. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.